We have weapons, we have armor, we're trying to make super soldiers, and we've been to space, but even 500 years from now, what we still probably won't have is a universe-wiping extraterrestrial superstructure. But we do know how we'd make one. Over 13 years, Bungie's seminal sci-fi first-person shooter series, Halo, has sold over 60 million copies. It's a shooter based 500 years in the future, where humanity is at war with a theocratic alien race known as the Covenant. The battle spills over onto gigantic halos, an ancient technology to wipe out a parasitic organism known as the Flood. But as far as the fiction goes, we actually know quite a bit about what it would take to construct a ring world. There's some controversy here, but Halo's rings get their inspiration from Larry Niven's Ring World, which get their inspiration from another physicist's fantasy known as Dyson Spheres, which are gigantic spheres constructed around a star to capture all the star's energy. Larry Niven figured he'd take a Dyson Sphere and just reduce it to the equatorial ring, making a gigantic ring with a radius of 93 million miles with a sun at the center, or one astronomical unit. The halo rings are much more conservative. They have a radius of just 5,000 kilometers, but they are wide. They're about 320 kilometers wide. In total, this gives them a surface area of 10 million square kilometers, which gives the entire ring about 2% the surface area of the Earth. And like the recent sci-fi film Elysium, the Halo rings have miles high walls that keep an atmosphere in without a roof. So how would the so-called Forerunners construct one of these things? Well, Niven-style ring worlds would have to overcome a few engineering obstacles to say the least. First, there's no known material in the universe that could keep something that big from tearing itself apart. They would be incredibly unstable and they'd have to fend off killer asteroid and meteor impacts. But according to physicist Kevin Grazier, the halo rings would fare much better. For one, they could orbit in a Lagrangian point around their star, an area of stable gravity, making the halo rings themselves much more stable. And given their size, you could probably keep a halo ring together with carbon nanotubes or even steel. Once the rings are constructed, you need an atmosphere and gravity. Dr. Grazier also figured out that although the walls in the Halo game are a little high, the walls on the Halo ring would not have to be miles high to keep an atmosphere glued to the ring's surface with its spin. And what a spin that would be. To generate Earth's gravity, or 1G, a Halo ring would have to rotate at 4.3 miles per second, making it rotate fully 19 times per day. You can achieve a spin like that in frictionless space, but it does lead to some odd outcomes. For instance, if you fired a bullet from a battle rifle on the surface, it could curve meters or even kilometers from where you wanted it to go. And even a banshee landing on the surface of the ring might be incinerated by the supersonic airflow from the spinning ring. It's doable, but kind of dangerous. Remember the first time you played Halo, the first time you stuck an Elite with a plasma grenade? It was perfect. The Halo series has pulled from and subsequently created some of the most enjoyable science fiction of all time. So the next time you're fighting on a Halo ring world, make sure to lead the enemy a little bit. Why? Because science. Want more science? Check out my last video on the science of Interstellar. In this episode, I'd like to thank artist Claire Max for her help drawing this episode. You can follow her on Twitter at Claire Max. Make sure to subscribe right here for more videos each week. And if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks. <laughs>